Hello, uh, welcome to Fundamental Friday, a uh, weekly series put together by the Percussive Art Society. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Sean Womack. I am the uh, <clears throat> chair of the Marching Percussion Committee, and uh, I am joined today by Ms. Julie Davila. Um, and her topic for, uh, for today is going to be some stick control and flam stuff. So I hope you have your sticks ready. And pads, and we're gonna turn it over to uh, to Sister Sister Jules. Great to have you today, Julie. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks to you for hosting, and uh, of course, thanks to the Progressive Heart Society for putting on the weekly event. So, super thrilled today to be a part of this. Um, I'm not gonna talk much about uh, myself at all because I have a ton of stuff to get to. So, uh, just real quick, I am Julie Dagel. I'm coming to you today from Nashville, Tennessee where I teach at Middle Tennessee State University uh, percussion method, or excuse me, percussion uh, lessons, and also write and teach for the drumline. Uh, some of my past history is I've been involved with uh, WGI for uh, 28 to 30 years. Don't do the math on that. Uh, 15 years as a teacher and a designer, uh, and about equally 14 to 15 years as an adjudicator. Um, so yeah, so that, that's really all you need to know. I serve as the second vice president for PAS currently uh, on the executive committee. And uh, let's just get some drumming, okay? So today's topic is stick control meets flam grids. And uh, I'm gonna get to the stick control part of it, but it's gonna take about 10 minutes to get there. So just hang with me. There's gonna be a very logical approach uh, to to the way we go through the handout today. Hopefully you've downloaded the handout or uh, you can access it on your screen. Uh, I'll really pretty much go in order. And uh, by the end, we'll be playing a 16 note flam grid, a triple bass flam grid, a flam paradiddle pyramid, and even a, we've got a, a fun little ditty at the end, which is one of the UNT 78 exercises. I uh, went to North Texas uh, back in the day, and uh, we used to play a super fun exercise. I think they still play it today, actually. So by the time we get to the last thing, we'll be playing maybe some flam uh, fives and some uh, flam drags as well. Okay? So hang with us, all right? <clears throat> all right, so let's start with just a couple of little warm-ups. I'm going to start with number one, which is basically groupings. Uh, and I'll talk about how groupings apply to flam rudiments uh, on down the line, too. So we're going to start with eight on each hand, each number on each hand, eight on each hand, seven on each hand, six, five, four. When we get to the twos, we're going to do the twos twice. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. All right. So let's start at a pretty moderate tempo up in the forte range, uh, nine inches, 12 inches, if you want to refer to it as that. Okay, here we go. One and two. Uh, 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 uh. mezzo piano range okay so if you want to say three inches you can say that let's just say mezzo piano range and this is really how it's going to be applicable later to uh our flam grids okay so down in the uh three inch range one two and one two. striving for same sounds even tempo but really really same sounds okay one more time we're going to boost the tempo just a little bit throughout today i'm going to be uh pretty much operating in a couple different tempos so we'll do everything really slow to start and then we might go to a moderate tempo and then we might push things to a little quicker tempo so just hang with what you can hang with okay 
um, today. I don't think I'll go too fast for anybody to be really not hanging in. So maybe the seven, eight at the end. All right, here we go. A little quicker. One, two, three, four, five. So if we had more time, I'd say let's start off our left. So I always want to start everything equal time on, on uh, each hand, each hand lead. Okay, let's go on to number two. Number two is sometimes referred to as bucks. It's just an accent tap exercise. Um, and uh, we definitely need that. For all your flam rudiments are really, the fundamental is accent taps. Um, so that's why I wanted to start with that today. So we'll kind of quickly go, I think most of the people probably have done number two, so we'll just do that like one time and then we'll move on to 2A, okay? Here we go, number two, one and two and uh, uh, uh. Trying to make sure all my three inch notes, all my mezzo piano notes sound the same. Uh, they're placed in the right place rhythmically and they sound the same hand to hand. All right, one more time. Number two. One, two. Awesome. Okay, so now let's go on to 2A, which is essentially the same thing. We're just going to scoot the left hand over into the E and us. But as you probably can recognize, the E and the, from an E to an A, uh, or an A uh to an E, it's literally the same motion as what we just did, the eight notes. We're just going to scoot it over, all right? And I've added on 2A, I've added a downbeat in the second bar as an anchor to kind of let us know where that downbeat is, and also a downbeat in the fourth bar. So maybe just real quick, take a look at those little transitions over the bar from the first measure to the second and the third measure to the fourth. All right, here we go, 2A. One and two and uh, uh, uh. What you really want to try to assess in your playing is now that we're on the E's or the U's, did we move with the, uh, the relaxation and the comfort that we did when we were putting in on the downbeats? So when we were putting just on the one and the and, does it look and sound and feel the same? All right, so that's something to assess through this. Here we go. 2A again. Uh, maybe just a little quicker. Two, one, two, uh, uh, uh. So now that brings us to 2B. So 2B is just literally the 16 note accent grid. I've only written out the fours for today, but we'll talk about 4 2, 1 later on. So we've essentially basically done everything to prepare ourselves to play this grid pretty well. The only difference is we have this underlining hand, right, that is going to play, fill in all the 16 notes. So for instance, if we did 2B measure 1, Let's all do this. Put your right hand on the pad and your left hand, like maybe on your leg or a different surface. So what we're gonna, let's just, let's just discover what that right hand is doing. Okay, here we go. Just one measure to be. One and two and three and four. Two and three. So we're playing our left on our leg. Okay, and so yeah, we can assess that. Did we play that with as much comfort and ease and good sound quality as we did in two? Um, just because we added in that other left. All right, so let's put it hands together. Just measure one. One, two, three, and two. Two, three, and again. Right, cool. So one thing I look at for that is, uh, you know, I know, I know one of the challenges for all players, right, is just to control the stick at all the heights and to be able to play grace notes low. And, and it's really how you end. Your grace note's gonna be how you end maybe the accent that came, the note that came before it, right? So one thing is not only just thinking about 
stopping that stick and playing down here. But I have, since you have this stick kind of sitting in place, I visually try to make sure those meet. Right? So that's another sort of resource that I have. I have my ears, I have my hands, I got my eyes, right? So I can kind of use that as a resource. All right, let's go on to measure two. We're gonna do the same thing. Let's take our right hand out, put it on the left on the leg, and we're just gonna play measure two and we're gonna discover that path. Okay? One, two, three, and Again, and a go again. So as you notice, that's basically the second bar of 2A. And we just fill in the right hand. All right, hands together, measure two. One, two, and two, and two. Two, again, ready, and a go again. All right. Uh, so now you see kind of the pattern. Let's go on to measure three. Let's do that just a couple times with uh, now left hand back on the leg. We'll move through this a little quicker now. One, two, ready, and a go again. Two, ready, and play, and. Great, hands together. One, two, and ready, and go again. Nice, two, ready, and a go again. Awesome, all right, and the fourth pattern. Right hand back on the leg, and fourth pattern. One, two, ready, and go again. Two, ready, and go again. All right, and then we'll put our hands together. One, two, ready, and go again. Two, ready, and go again. Awesome. Okay, so let's put the whole thing together. Um, and you can sometimes, like I try to teach my students to either um, just try to in their brain isolate the one hand, even though the hands are together. So if I'm playing here, uh, measure one, I might be thinking one and two and three and four and one e a e a e a e a one and two and three and four and one e a e a e a e. So vocalizing one component of what you're doing. It's like brings that brain in as like a, almost a third limb. Um, so what I'd like to do now is just run that grid one time and then we're gonna vocalize something in that. Okay, so here's 2B. One and two and three. vocalize is that's just like a first step um, we're gonna vocalize downbeats okay and that's a good first step because we want to be able to even though that in the second third and fourth measure the downbeat is an unaccented note we want to be able to feel that pulse um, so feel and feeling the accent to the pulse one two three or one two three one uh, one two three so being able to vocalize uh, that pulse is super helpful. Eventually that would be your feet if we were applying that to more to percussion. But vocalizing is just another way to kind of instill that overall pulse, okay? Uh, here we go, 2B, vocalizing downbeats. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Awesome, a little bit quicker, and one, two, ready. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, here's, a, we're gonna move on, but one thing to be pretty clear about is, this is a fundamental part of the grid, right? So we haven't flammed anything, which we're gonna get to really soon. But if that doesn't sound good on the basic level of just accents and interbeats, um, then when you add flams, it's not really going to get better, right? So we got to make sure our fundamentals are really solid. We sound really good without the complexity of the flam first. All right? Excellent. We're going to jump down to number three, which is the triplet grid. We're actually going to kind of get dig into this just a smidge, and then we're going to come back to it later. But I wanted to write out so that the threes – we're going to do the first six measures only right now. And this is just another sort of accent tap exer excuse me, exercise. 
And we're going to do four. We're basically moving the partials again, like we did in the four sixteen note grid, where we we moved the part. We had the accent on the first partial for four times, in the second partial for four times, then the third. Basically, I'm going to do that with the triplet grid. So first partial four times in each hand in this version, uh, and then second partial four times right, four times left, and then third partial four times right and four times left. Okay, and I just kind of want to embed that if there's people out there that not played the triplet grid before, like triplets feel a little different than the 16 notes because they're that's odd or odd grouping. So I just want to uh, instill that before we get to actually flam grid. So let's go uh, back to slower. Okay, and what I love about the triplet grid, uh, one handed like bucks type triplet exercises is, is there's three mechanics in the triplets, but two sounds. So we have the mechanics are down, tap, up, right? Three mechanics, but only two sounds. The accent's a sound, the tap and the upstroke are the same sound. And actually what I find a lot is people pulling a little too quick on the upstroke so that they're kind of skimming the pad on the way to the upstroke instead of playing it like a tap and then recovering it back up. So the trajectory, of both of those taps is the exact same. It's only the recovery that's different. So that's where you're gonna get your same sounds. Okay? Um, and not lifting too soon on the upstroke. And it's like a millisecond sometimes, but it makes the biggest difference in the, kind of the fatness of your taps and the fullness of your taps. Um, you can even hear that on this pad. As opposed to. Right, I hope you can get some critical listening ears and really hear that. All right, here, let's run this. Uh, we may just run this one time. First six bars of number three, and then we're gonna get, for sure, get the stick control, promise. One, two, number three. One, two, number three. First partial, first partial left. Get ready, second partial. Partial, fourth partial, excuse me, third partial, left in. Awesome. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so being able to vocalize those downbeats are really, it's really important. Um, if you have a drum set, you can put left foot on the hi-hat and play those down meets or right foot on the kick drum. Um, that's a good way to really check yourself as well. All right, here we go. We're actually going to get into stick control now. All right, look at number four. So I've got this variety, four lines of stickings. And we're going to learn it first just as simply stick control, which means we're going to give it a volume and a rhythm, and we're going to try to play all our sounds even. And that gets a little tricky sometimes when you have like multiple strokes in one hand and then one inserted stroke in another and you've got all these different changes. Uh, but uh, we're just really trying to focus on same sounds, uh, same feel to rebound and response, really, and then as best in, uh, rhythmic placement as we can within those patterns. All right? So let's do... Um, Let's do two lines, let's combine two lines. So the first two lines, left, left, right, left, and right, 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 left. Let's just go through that. Let's just start it as a kind of a vo uh, forte volume. So somewhere in that nine to 12 range, you get to decide how you wanna play that. And uh, we're just gonna try the first two lines, okay? We're gonna make them eighth notes today. I love to start with students with them as quarter notes and put on a met and just start with a quarter note because you're instilling that each each stroke has, they can hear where the placement is of that stroke. So I usually start with that. Um, but for the sake of time, we're gonna go to eight notes today. Here we go, one, first two lines of four, two, and one, and two, and eight, and eight, and. Let's do that one more time. One and two and one and two. Okay. And 
And let's go on to the third and the fourth line. All right, so a right and three lefts, and then you get into the fourth line, you've got this single, single, threes, right? You have all these, these little three rights in a row, but they're not in the same grouping of fours. Um, so it's like a, it's a right paired it'll over and over again, okay? Here we go, uh, third and fourth line. One and two and three. trying to do is is kind of try to still stay in motion even though you have these like these single notes that get put in there and then they have to kind of wait a while before you're back and engage I, in all my percussion playing I try to think about that law of inertia right an object in motion stays in motion um, and so I'm really trying to like stay moving even if it's a slow pace right um, so like the fourth line You see that right hand is kind of doing this, or excuse me, left hand. We're still staying in motion. Now, if you're in a drum line and you really need to refine that and detail that out, you might have that be more of a downstroke and control that. And just it, that's just going to be based on how you are going to make that a more unison look. Um, so it can be any way. It just needs to be the same across the line, right? Uh, all right, so let's go. Let's now apply this to like what it would be as related to the flam grid. So we're going to take it down to three inches. We'll go a little quicker and let's read all four lines. Let's make these 16 is one E and a two E and a all four lines together. Mezzo piano dynamic. One, two, three, and uh, uh, uh. And so I'm, I'm still trying to, even though I don't have as far to go, I'm actually still trying to sort of feel like I'm not stopping, stopping all the energy, restarting, stopping. That's going to affect flow over time. I'm also trying to stay relaxed and still have a percentage of bounce even down here. So if we start sticking everything and we take out the bounce and we kind of squeeze to keep everything low, then we're going to take, we're going to squeeze the resonance out of the stick. And it's going to affect our flow. Okay, so stay relaxed. Make sure there's a percentage of bounce in there. You might not be opening as much back here as you were up here, but uh, there's still percentage of bounce. And we're always listening for uh, resonant sounds. Okay. Um, so now here's how it applies to stick control. We're there. Uh, look at 4A in your handout, second page. Uh, so here is the, the same grid as we did in 2B, but now we've added the flams. And there's two different stickings written. The first sticking that you'll see under the notes is actually the sticking without the primary note of the flam. So we've taken the primary note out of the flam, but we've left the grace note in. Okay, so that's where we get that first left. It's the grace note to the right flam. So as you see in this grid, if we look at the first measure of 4A, left, left, right, left, 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 right, left, that's our first uh, sticking that we used in 4, all right? And then you can look on the next measure of 4A and see how those are, basically it's the same, right? It's the second line where we have that flam on the second partial, and then the third measure, right, left, 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 and the fourth measure, right, left, right, right. So uh, I like to do this exercise where we, we play it first as a stick control down at three inches, and then we're gonna fake flam, okay? So what's a fake flam? A fake flam is where we fake the primary note and we still play the grace note. Um, that, if you've never faked flam, that gets, it takes a little bit to get used to, maybe just try that in each hand right now because you have significant difference in energy in the hands and, and touch, right? So I'm like, I gotta kind of throw this stick and I've gotta lightly play that note. So you've really gotta have that independence to be able to, to channel those different energies, okay? Uh, so we're gonna use a lot of fake flans from here on out. 
All right, so if you can't get that today, maybe that's just a great summer project for you or in the next couple of weeks. So let's take uh, number four. And you can either, whatever helps you, if you want to look at 4A and actually read the notes, read the pattern, read those stickings underneath, that's great. But if you want to stick with 4, I find it easier to stick with uh, the, the stick control letters on number 4 and just know where I'm putting my flange. So whatever is easiest for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to play it once as a stick control, and then once as a fake flange, and then once with the flange. So well, let's just go line by line right now, okay? Um, okay, first line, uh, just to control at three inches, then fake the, fake the flam, and then add the flam. And we're still on like slow 16 notes. One E and a, two E and a, ready and go and. Fake. Flam. End on an unaccented downbeat. All right, how'd we do? Um, one of the challenges in this when you're faking the flam is that you have that energy of the fake and then you've got to play a tap that sounds just like your other hand. Yeah. So it's a great exercise in touch. So you have to navigate a lot through that, okay? Um, so yeah, let's do that one more time. First line, so stick control, fake flam, flam. One E and a T E and a ready and a T and a ready. Okay. All right. Awesome. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, uh, the second line, same thing. One E and a two E and so that just to be sure, the flam is now going on the second partial. Which, if you're looking at the stickings, that's going to be on the second right of three. All right. Here we go. One, two. Ready, and a belly, and a stick control. Fake flam. Flam. Sorry, mess up. Can't talk and play. Here we go. Again, two, ready, stick control. Fake. Timing was a little sketchy there. All right, how'd we do? Okay, great. Let's go on to the next one. So, flam goes on the third partial, the second of three. It's going to something we're going to come back to in a little bit with some other uh, remix, but third partial. Same uh, pattern stick control, fake, play it. One, two, ready, and a go. And a Just for the sake of time, let's move on a little bit. Next line. So, one E and a. Uh, there's the flam on the uh. Same patterns. Three times. Ready and a go E and a. Uh. If you really want to get uh, accustomed to this, if we were going to go in there twos, we've got those two back to backs. Which is again, you're throwing energy, but you're playing soft notes. So it's a good little trick to get used to. Uh, all right, so let's do this. Um, let's break it down now into fake flams, flam, fake flam, flam, fake flam, flam, fake flam, flam. So we're going to go each line twice. The first time faking it, then flamming it. The second line, fake it, flam it. Third line, fake it, flam it. Okay. Got it? All right, here we go. One, two, ready, and um, um. slower you go and to control the harder it is actually to control tempo uh, but that's a that's actually a great place to work on your controls in the slow tempos for sure um, let's do all that one more time a little quicker 
Let's see if we can get up into that 16. Da, 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 da. So same thing, fake flam once, flam once. One, two, ready, and then ready. All right, one, let me start over here. One, two, start with fake, ready, and in. time today but you can certainly go and take that through four two one and uh on on four what i the easiest way to do that until you can memorize it is to just look at the two columns twice and then the one column four times so four two one is a pretty pretty common um marching arts sort of format that we use sometimes in strategies where four means we're going to play the pattern four times, maybe on each hand, or play the four pattern times, and then switch to the next pattern, uh, uh, off like in, in the triplet grid. The downbeats four times, the second partial four times, the third partial four times, and then we go into two times each. First partial twice, second partial twice, third partial twice. The format is twos we play twice through, ones we play, fours we play once, twos twice, and then once four times. So like for instance, four times of the triplet grid uh, for alternating, ones would be two, three, four, five. so four times through. Um, so yeah, all right, so we've now accomplished the fours of the uh, 16 note grid, and I hope that you'll take it on your own and do your twos and your ones. Um, so let's go down to uh, now number five, which is basically now that we, we can move a little quicker because we established sort of the format. Um, number five is the stick control for the triplet grid if we were um, alternating the triplets. So in number three, I wrote them out. It was a same hand exercise, but actually um, – this is going to be on the variation of our, of our alternating. So we got one triplet, two triplet, three, and the second partial. Three, two, three, two, three. All right. So that's our basis. I've written that out in 5A with the flams if you need to look at that, if that's helpful. Uh, but let's do the same format. All right. Let's do... Um, Let's do the same format. We're going to be down at three inches, and we're going to stick control the first line, and then we'll fake, fake flam the first line, and then we'll flam the first line. All right, so we're going to slow it down a little bit. One triplet, two triplet, ready, and. Really trying to play same sounds. Oh, sorry, I didn't go in the pattern. Uh, I wanted to say, we're really. Not only do we want to be in really solid triplets, we want to be generating the same sounds down here at this three inches, okay? All right, now we'll do it in, in sequence. Here we go. And one, two, stick control, and. And let's end on an unaccented downbeat, all right? Let's do it again. One, two, three, two. Good on that. That's the easiest one, honestly, of the two, of the three. Let's go on to the next one. So we have three rights, three lefts, and the flam is going to go on the second partial, so it'll be in the second note of the groupings of three. Now that's why, honestly, I started the day with the eight seven six five four three groupings, is because we're going to see a lot of commonalities of uh, different groupings. Uh, that we have to play on one hand in some of these flam rudiments. So now we're in the threes. Uh, we have some threes in the other as well. These are triplet threes. Uh, here we go. So stick control, fake flam, flam it. One, two, ready, and. Again, 
and ready. Um, same sounds. You'll notice when I go to fake flam, I'm, I'm really trying to make sure that sounded like the first rep through. So if I'm here. listen and make sure that that the energy that I had to fake flam didn't affect my sound and my uh, stick control you can so hear some inconsistencies on occasion on timing and that's why we work on it right um, all right so let's go to the third line down and this the flam will be on the third partial which is in the third measure of 5a if you want to check that out if you need to see that for a second all right so here we go third line down one, two, three, stick control. We did the, the 16 note. We're gonna do fake flam, flam, fake flam, flam, fake flam, flam. So twice through each line. First time fake flaming, and then with the flam. Here we go. One, two, and. and. Bottles there, timing, but you get the idea, right? Uh, let's do that one more time. Let's take it a little faster. Here we go. Two, and one, two, and one. Great. So I hope that was uh, a little bit challenging for you. And again, the next step would be 4 2 one in that. Um, and of course, you can just keep uh, keep uh, challenging yourself. Or it gets to, it gets to a certain tempo where you're, you you probably look a little ridiculous, there. you know, uh, fl uh, fake flaming it. But it really will help your quality of sound down on that low end. Um, and you know, after you get that tackle, then you can sort of nuance your grace note. If you want your grace note to then be a little bit under all your inner beats then certainly at least you're down in the range that you can start uh, manipulating that a little even more specifically. So, um, you know, that's that's going to come with time as well. And to be honest, like, I don't do a lot of this, like, fake flam, this, this um, rehearsal practice strategy with a drum line. Sometimes we'll break some stuff down like that if we need to. We do a lot more of, like, hand separate, one hand on the rim, one hand on the rim or the leg, and we... You know, we figure out all that one handed stuff. I know Jeff Queen covered that quite a bit in his session. Um, I'm just a huge fan of hand separate uh, everything and figure out those pathways and the sound quality in each hand. Um, so these, this concept is a little bit more like your personal practice uh, concept. So, all right. So, how does this apply to some other rudiments like flam? Paradiddles have four consecutive notes in a row. Again, kind of circling back to number one of the of uh, about an hour ago or 45 minutes ago when we started, we had the eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two uh, groupings. So I think it's you know obviously eight, you know, are, are great for anything. You know that's going to be how we learn to play good even fast singles. But when we get into those five, four, three, two groupings, it's really going to help our uh, more sophisticated flam rudiments, if we can do that well. With good same sounds. Um, so, and, you know, I was an athlete in uh, high school as well, and, uh, and I ran track, and I remember my coach used to make, uh, my, my race was a half mile, and my coach used to make me run the two mile all the time. And I hated it. I hated the two mile race. But what I realized is he was conditioning me through the two mile, so that the half mile felt easy. So if I'm going to work on my groupings and I want my fours to feel really easy, then I'm going to work on like sevens and eights, longer groupings, right? And then fours will eventually feel easy. So 
I kind of uh, took that method into all of my personal practice is that like, if it's hard then do a harder version and then hopefully it'll make it, it's like lifting weights, right? Make it easier. Okay, so flan paradiddles, let's just play some flan paradiddles. So we're gonna take, let's do your hand separate. Put your left hand on your leg, your right hand on the pad. We're gonna play four flan paradiddles. So we're starting with our right hand, four flan paradiddles. One and a two and a right. Two, and you'll find these four note groups. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if we switch, we're gonna find four notes in the left hand. Still start on the right, so right's on the leg. Still start on the right, okay? Even though our left's on the pad. One, two, four paradiddles. One, two, three, four. Two. One, two, three, four. All right, so we basically, we, we discovered that we have four notes in each hand. And the flam comes on the third partial of those four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So maybe just break that down for a while and go. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And be comfortable with putting that primary note on the third part. All right, and then you get into your flam paradiddles. And then that feels comfortable. Um, so that flam paradiddles are grouping of four. Flam accents are a grouping of three. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Which we found, we discovered in five. You can see the sets of threes. Um, so the flam goes on the second. So maybe just practice left, 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 right, left, or, all right? So just practice, isolate just that. Two, three, one, two, three, right? And you might say my flams are a little fat, but I come, I come from the old school land that flam is not a double stop. So uh, I can adjust that if needed, but I like a good, good sounding flam. All right, and then, so we've discovered that flam paradiddles have four consecutive notes. Flam is on the third partial. Flam accents have three consecutive notes. Flam's on the second partial. And then we have that Swiss Army triplets, which is the flam on the second, second of two grouping. All right, so we have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Maybe just practice that a little bit. One, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, so that's that's the one thing I discover in the Swiss armies uh, with my students. I, I I make them sort of recognize first that that unaccented hand is really kind of a shuffle. There's groupings of two, but it's a little shuffle. You can even turn that into a stick control exercise and then take it out, right? And then maybe go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two and then. Fill it in. So if we let's do that one. So let's do a measure of the left hand, what I call the left hand shuffle, then a measure of putting the flam on the second partial, and then fill it in. So three bars. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's a good way to get, actually those Swiss armies is recognized either hand, you know, that little, little unaccented shuffle underneath. All right, let's move on. We have two more things to get to, and I'll, I'll try to wrap this up pretty quickly. Uh, if you were with us on the first PAS Fundamental Friday with Joe Hobbs, Joe went over the paradiddle pyramid. So we're gonna build on that today, all right? We're gonna do the pyramid, paradiddle pyramid with flams. And uh, so this is number six on your sheet. So you'll see, I, I just wrote it out in the stick control method. Um, I think sometimes that's easier to see it that way than kind of embedded in with a bunch of notes and music. Um, so we got our single paradiddle, that's sticking. So if we 
If we take out the flam primary note, we fake it. Whew, gotta get those four. There we go. Uh, you'll notice we have that those fours across the two groupings of the pair. So we, we're now back to a four note grouping, which we discovered earlier. Uh, then we go to double paradiddles. Similarly, we have four consecutive rights when we go from the one double paradiddle on the right to the left. And then uh, the triple paradiddle as well. And really we have four lefts as well. If we continue to re repeat it, it, you can see the two lefts at the end, the two lefts at the beginning. As, it, as, as you string things together, it will, depending on how long you play, it's going to be four consecutive notes per on each hand. Okay? So let's just, we've already sort of, uh, let's fake flam a set of four single paradigms. So, all right, that's what we're gonna do. One and two and three and again and I'm really trying to generate same sounds. One and two and three and again and again. Uh, let's go to the double paradiddle. Uh, one. All right, so now we're kind of in a three, four feel. One and two and three and one and two and three and one, two and double paradiddle and. Do it if you just want to do it right now as a stick control, that's that's fine too. Triple paradigm, we're back in a four four feel, triple feel, two, ready, and again. All right, so we've gone through all of our sort of stick control to those. So, why don't we do that? Each line, a fake flam, four of each. Okay, and I'll try not to mess up for you. Here we go. Twenty and a three and a fake flam go and got through that okay all right so we can of course you know increase the tempo through all that as you get more skilled at sort of that that flat flat fake flam kind of idea all right let's go on and end with our super fun unt 7 8 exercise so you'll see this is number seven um, I've written it out, but honestly, the easiest way to just uh, comprehend this exercise off the top is it's just groupings of four, three, four, three, three, four, three, four. So I kind of picture in my head those numbers, 43, 43, 34, 34. And if you don't, it's, it's actually a little easier to not look at the music and just play your groupings. We're going to alternate. So I'll play it once for you. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. Four, three, four, three, three, four, three, four, one. All right. So let's do that together. Just play it as a check pattern. We're gonna do this one in a little different format because it's a little hard to get the, the feel. If you're not comfortable with the exercise, the feel of the stick control first. So let's just get the feel of that exercise first. So here we go. One time, just with accents, no flams, unless you want to flam it and you're, you know, you feel comfortable with that, you can do that. One, two, ready, and. Let's do that again. Awesome. 
awesome. So let's do this for sake of time. Check pattern and then go right back into it with flange. All right, so one time through check, no stop, right back in with flames. One, two, three, and. Just a few more times. One, two, eight, and one. Check. Four, three, three, four. Great. All right. So now you can look at, I'm just going to kind of leave this as an assignment for you in a second. But you can look at the, the stick control. It's the first sticking across the bottom where I've taken out the primary note. So, all right, so you can kind of work on that. Um, it's This is a fun sort of just uh, exercise to, to make it kind of a spree. You can throw in lots of things. You can throw in uh, cheeses, slam fives. So there's, you can do things like in the set of four, you can put uh, flam taps in the four, Swiss armies in the threes, or, uh, you know, there's a million different ways that you can do that. You can even flam drag it. Right? And then you could actually sort of stick control that portion. So I'm, I'm putting the drag in on the stick control exercise. So the stick control exercise, I'll slow it down a little bit. Ah. And that's actually the same one be the same breakdown that you would do for flam fives as well. Um, put that diddle on that second partial of the stick control. Okay, so hopefully that's been uh, uh, a, a lot of fun. I hope I've left you with a few things that maybe you can make some summer projects out of or just continue to refine. I mean, the one thing about being a percussionist is it, it's never ending, right? We're always working on discovering the best sound quality, our best timing, um, learning from others finding new ways to practice things and learn from others. And that's what's great about this PIS Friday fundamental thing. So uh, that's been a lot of fun today, guys. Back to you, Sean. Awesome, Julie. Um, well, we got, we got a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, great, like great information, just great stuff. Um, could you talk a little bit about just, uh, you, you mentioned this briefly, but just the interp of the flam and how you might adjust that or approach that and change that. And, and maybe how that uh, works from uh, maybe a rudimental setting versus a drum set setting, right? Like the interp of that flam and what you might do with the grace node and. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, and it depends too. And it, it, the more players you have, the more detailed that has to be, right? Like if you're talking about drum line, and that's really probably why so many lines go to almost a, a double stop type of uh, interpretation because it's just maybe a little easier to clean. You know, it's really tight. Um, so it, the interpretation is going to be different. Like if I'm playing drum set, you know, I'm going to have a big fat flam probably. That sounds great on drum set. I'm not going to really worry about lowering my grace note. I'm not going to get yelled at by Dennis Delucia. Uh, good friend of mine. Yes. But uh, yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of honestly having enough facility to make a little minor change if you need to. Like if I, I like a, I like a flam that sounds kind of fat a little bit. Right. You know, we don't want, and you can even start with that. Honestly, a good strategy is like start with like super open. Like if I have students that play a super tight, almost double stop flam and I can't get them out of that, I'll have them go super open. And then, Tighten it up and be able to kind of nudge it over towards the primary note 
and, and nudge it back and have that. Have that facility to do that. Just feel what those chain what that feels like. Right. One thing I okay. noticed with a lot of young players though is they when they go to play, interestingly, it could be in their very first slam. This drives me crazy. You think you'd think your first slam would be your best, you know, in a pass. Right. It's like it's like the beads are kind of attached and moving, and they do this big lift. And really, when I think about flams, like this this uh, clinic masterclass is a little bit super specific. But when I personally think about flams, I'm, I'm really dropping the, dip, the grace note in. I'm not really thinking about placing it. And the stick control just gets everything kind of low and down and builds some awareness. But then honestly, you know, I'm just dropping it. I'm trying to get down here and just drop that grace note in. What about, uh, what, what about using like a molar technique within your drum line? Is that something you do with the students at MTSU or uh, is that a case by case thing? Uh, when you guys come across that in the music, like if that feels like it's appropriate. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the molar, the molar idea of that sort of, one motion, two sounds almost. I think of it, I teach it like this a little bit. I teach it like, um, have you ever like thrown, snapped a towel at somebody, right? Like I'm sure everybody was in seventh grade at some point and right. snapped a towel at somebody. Right. Uh, right, so it's like that. And you don't, when you do that motion, you don't really think out, in, out, in, right? It's just like one instinctive flick. And so if you take that and you just turn your wrist over, Right, and it's almost the same motion. That's kind of sometimes the way I start to explain it. Do I teach it in the drum line when it's needed? Yeah. So, like, you know, if you got patty flaws, patty flaws are one of those rudiments where you kind of have to to get to a certain speed. You know, so if you have those really quick pulls, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna like freeze anything out. That's really important. I was like. One thing I talk to all my students about is not freezing anything out, right? Like we can minimize, we can minimize. The faster we go, the small, the front more to the front of the hand, the more like nervous twitch we got to we can minimize muscle mass. But I'm not gonna the, the act of freezing something out is gonna make them super stiff, and it's actually gonna cause more resistance. So, and the molar type, I might like feel a little freer here, right? And I'm trying to get. One motion, two sounds. So I'm using all that. Um, but in terms of do I teach it? I don't teach. We don't spend time like today. We're going to study the molar stroke, right? That's really. But when I, when we come across something in the music from a tempo standpoint or a rudiment standpoint that needs that, then we'll break it down and talk about it. Awesome. I have uh, one other question. Uh, this is honestly selfishly. This is for me. But um, could you talk about like the hand separate thing? I know that's. Where'd you go? Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'll, I'll take that as a lead. The hand separate thing. So now I do 100%, and I see some of my drumline folks on here. Uh, I do utilize hand separate a ton um, in my drumline teaching. Like when, when things aren't sounding good, to be honest, I'm like, all right, left hand on the rim. Well, honestly, we usually go right hand on the rim because it's normally something in the non-dominant hand. Now I'm a lefty, I'm a left-hander, so I have a little bit of an advantage there, but, um, and we use it for rolls. We, we break down rolls. A lot of times you'll, you'll find a lot of inconsistencies with rolls if you do like chicken and a roll. So I use a uh, hand separate daily, um, and I use it in my private lessons. I make sure all my students know, really, I try to embed in them to work every single rudiment hand separate. Um, and uh, and even in the drum line within the music. Well, one thing I like to do in the drum line is um, to help improve like that low end. I mean, because really what makes a drum line sound great is how well they sound down, like the body of the, of the of the music right. sound. It's easy to play accents. But where the work is, is down low. So a lot of times, if we have like paradiddle-diddle, 
you know, passion dudes or whatever, and they're like, uh, I'll make them take the accents out first. And I'll make them play like a four to eight bar phrase with nothing but stick control and and rhythms. Like I got I take everything out. I'll take the accents out, I'll take the, the flams out, I'll take the diddles out, and we take it down to three inches. And we get all those rhythms and stickings to sound even down at three inches for like like out of the music, not just an exercise. And I'll right. take everything away and strip it down. And then I'll give them like, all right, now you get accents back. But the minute it starts changing down here, we're taking them out and put, you know, going back to that. Right. And then we'll kind of give them the embellishments back. Sometimes with college band, there's not a ton of time to get completely super detailed. That's probably one of the most frustrating things about college band that's different than high school. So a lot of times I've got to like build awareness and then hope they go work on it. You know, so sometimes we do that, like take stuff out, get down at three inches for an eight bar phrase or whatever, and it doesn't sound great right in the moment. But then I'm like, okay, do you see what we need to work on? This is where you, now you guys need to go back and shed some stuff on your own. Just because college band, we just have no time. But yeah, all the hand stepper stuff, like, you know, plan access. You know, the best way to do it, if you've never done hand stepper before, I recommend like going to the rim first so you can kind of hear the still the composite. But then as you get a more, build a little bit more awareness, if you take it to your leg, then you can really even isolate more, like how do I sound, how does that hand sound? Am I having trouble keeping that, bringing that downstroke down? How do my four fours sound? Um, but in the beginning, you can't just expect students to be able to hand separate, because it's gonna, they're gonna hear it differently, it's gonna feel differently. Especially when you have to put, like, if you're leading right and put your left on the drum, you know, they want to then start left, you know, but like feeling that lead hand right. part with the, so, yeah, I, I use it. I'm surprised my students on here just making fun of me because they're just like, I get it, hand separate, I get it, like, for four years, you know, I can't separate. Yeah, allegedly, you like to keep some of those accents. I think that's what the what the members say is like once sometimes they go away and don't come back. <laughs> Emily, right. <laughs> right. So, it doesn't sound good. You don't get it back. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, well awesome. Well, thanks again, Julie. Um, uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, just a couple, couple things really quick before we get out of here. I completely botched a couple things on the beginning, but, um, check this out when we're done today, you can check this out on the PAS Facebook page. Um, as well as the PAS YouTube channel. Uh, you can go back and uh, check more uh, Fundamental Fridays under uh, PAS.org uh, under resources. Uh, so, uh, and <clears throat> last thing, uh, if you're looking for more resources, uh, join PAS. Uh, there's, there's tons of, of, of great material, uh, much like this, uh, that are available at your fingertips. Uh, uh, so please support PAS, join PAS, uh, and join us again. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, PIS.